You're now listening to Sound Talent Media. Check out more shows at SoundTalentMedia.com. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify. The global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max, It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like Max Cushion, Max Soft Landings with DNA Loft V2 Foam, and Max Smooth Rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Tone Mob Podcast. Seriously, thank you so much for being here. This one, this is a special one. This one has been on my mind for two plus years, ever since I met Jason at NAM in 2020, which actually sounds weird to say. Like, NAM? In, we had a NAM in 2020? We did. And that's where I learned some very interesting things about the whole Chibson thing. And now Jason is on the podcast to share them with you. So I'm really excited for you to get to hear the story behind all this hilarity. And I hope you enjoy this chat I had with Jason. We really just kind of go all over the place, but a lot of it's just focused on him and why he's doing what he's doing, and I think it's awesome. I don't have too much house cleaning, so I just want to go ahead and thank everybody for all the support. There are a myriad of ways that you can support this show, and you all are doing all of those on a regular basis, and that's what helps keep this thing going and make it a viable entity. So thank you so much. If you're shopping for new gear, ToneMob.com slash Sweetwater helps out a lot. ToneMob.com slash Reverb for anything you can't find on Sweetwater is also helpful. And then just supporting any of the projects that tickle your fancy, from Patreon to American Cyclops stuff, the YouTube channel, Stringjoy, all of these things. I wear a lot of hats, I try to do a lot of things, and I try to keep it interesting for everybody. So thank you all for all the support on all that stuff. And, you know, I should shut up so that I can start talking to Jason, and you can get into the meat of this conversation. But I just want to say thank you so much, and let's get on with the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Tone Mob Podcast, the show about guitar stuff occasionally. Sometimes I'm your host, Blake Weiland, and with me today I have Jason USA from the infamous chips in USA. What is going on, my dude? Oh, Blake, man. Thank you for having me, man. It's, uh, uh, nothing's going on. Just hanging out. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, this is long overdue. We met at NAMM two years ago. Yeah. I think 2020, 2020. like it, it feels weird to say that NAMM happened in 2020. It does. It's like, I'm always like, wait, that was 2019. no, no, that was 2020. Yeah. That was just before <laughs> all chaos broke loose. And, uh, you know, we now live in this alternate timeline that I think is probably a, a simulation of some sort. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I've, I've wanted to get you on for a long time. You explained to me kind of the grand idea behind Chibson when we were there at the EQD party. And I just thought, you know, people need to, the people need to hear from you in a way that is not uh, a chips and media item. You know, it needs to be straight from your mouth. Uh, Kind of personify the whole thing a little bit. So why don't you give me, you know, not only the chips and backstory, but your whole backstory and kind of leading up to where we are today. How long's the show? (laughs) Volume volume seven. So in sixth grade, I, uh, (laughs) no. Um, Yeah. It's a... It's a, you know, I was, I've been thinking about this question because I, I listened to some shows, you know, to kind of set the tone and get the, get my head straight on, you know, how mm-hmm. to talk about stuff. Um, 
it's really kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where it all kind of sort of started. But like, I always had a, um, you know, I always played music. I grew up playing music, right? So that was always kind of the thing for me um, my whole entire life. So that was kind of it. And then, you know, it wasn't really obviously till when Chipson started in, two, we're coming up on five years. In, the, a mo- in a month. Wow. How's that? You know, that's crazy. But um, that's crazy. You know, it, it, it all started. I don't know. I have to say it's like kind of like a, a weird culmination of like all of these events in my life leading up to this kind of point. And, and mm-hmm. it's kind of uh, a weird thing. So where, how did it all start? I don't know. I don't have an answer. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Um, you know, I think that one of the easiest ways I would say is for me, I, I started thinking about that like the seeds for chibson i would say started obviously i guess like i said i started playing music when i was a kid and played in bands forever and uh worked odd jobs and stuff to support playing mm-hmm. in bands and then i moved to the west coast in 2010 and uh started doing stand-up comedy and i did that for several years and um met you know met met some people that were I had just stayed in contact with and had like friendships that were just proving to be lifelong kind of friendships. And out of those, out of those few friendships that I made out of comedy, uh, my buddy Alex, uh, who's kind of been with me doing chips in a long kind of aside me via a messenger app. <laughs> uh, you know, we kind of, <laughs> we, we, we started as, com- you know, doing, go, going to comedy shows and stuff and doing open mics and doing, that kind of stuff. And then, um, you know, we kind of went, he moved to Ohio and started doing voiceover work. And I started to, uh, do other things here, started working on, on some film stuff and just, uh, doing other stuff. And then Chips and Come was born out of that. And, um, and that's kind of, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, I'm really trying to shorten it. Cause I, cause I could sit here and literally go on for like seven hours as to, that's the fine. Origins. It's a podcast. It only gets weird when you uh, stop oh, talking. Right. That's what I tell people. <laughs> <So>. Yeah, <laughs> but that, yeah. I mean, I, I would just say that that's kind of you know, in a sense, that's kind of where where the idea of riffing on jokes and music. Alex and I were, uh, you know, he played music and I played music, and so when we, I would do stand up, we always would hang out. You know, a lot of doing stand up is just a waiting to get up on stage, and you know, you just be sitting out in front of a club or doing whatever and, you know, talking, ripping jokes with other comedians and stuff. But me and Alex had always had a musical connection and we did that mm-hmm. and we did a podcast for nine years, um, uh, together. And, you know, we did, all, uh, so we kind of like honed in on, in, you know, riffing on, on the air and <laughs> doing, uh, doing kind of stuff, interviewing people and whatnot. And then, um, you know, and then, like I said, we kind of went or drifted, into our own paths. I, I kind of stopped doing comedy, started to work in the music industry, quote unquote, in the tech world for a, a really uh, giant streaming company. And um, and uh, I did that for a while and that was kind of weird. And then when that kind of fizzled out, I uh, that was kind of when the whole chips and thing happened. So when the chips and thing kind of started, you know, my buddy Alex was kind of there and so you know, I would come up with stuff and we'd put it up and I would, we would just always message each other and riff jokes. And that's kind of, it's so funny. <laughs> I haven't talked to Alex in like maybe like a year and a half and, until yesterday. <laughs> I talked to him oh, wow. for four hours or three hours or something. Cause I hadn't talked to him. I mean, we literally, our whole thing has just been via text and that's kind of the engine behind the initial kind of thing, you know, and, 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 yeah, and I, I I feel like I'm missing stuff. Obviously, like the movie thing I met, I kind of briefed over, but I'm sure we can touch up on that. But that was also another kind of huge cornerstone or push to to starting it. So, whew, I hope mm-hmm. that's not too long winded. But <laughs> <laughs> so so let's let's go back and fill in some of those yeah. gaps. So let it let's go right back to the movie thing. What did, what did you mean when you said you started working in film it's, stuff? Well, you know, I always had an interest in doing like back in the early days of like say youtube and stuff like i uh when i was playing in bands and doing whatever i had an interest in like filmmaking and uh doing skits and stuff like that so i used to shoot a lot of that and and did a bunch of stuff in that kind of realm and then when i got into stand-up 
years later, um, I had an interest in kind of pursuing, you know, I started to meet people who were kind of closer to the industry of, you know, just, just as you get older, you know, you start to kind of branch out and you start meeting different people and, and folks who are doing different stuff. And, um, and so, and they were like-minded and that kind of thing. And so I had an idea to do a doc, uh, on this, on the band Dread Zeppelin. And I'm not sure if mm-hmm. you're familiar with them, but they're really quickly. Through you, I am familiar. Through yeah. me? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I did. Yeah. So Dread Zeppelin was, so I grew up when I was a kid, just a little side story when I was a kid and it kind of makes sense with the chips and stuff in, in a way. Um, you know, in eighth grade, ninth grade or whatever, you know, you're playing guitar and you're listening to Zeppelin and for the first time or whatever, you know? And in 1990, this band came out of nowhere called Dread Zeppelin. And it, they kind of just, for me, it being like kind of a music kind of nerd and whatever, like they were just so perfect for me because they were, they did reggae <laughs> versions of Led Zeppelin songs, but they had this right. Elvis singer as the singer and it just blew my mind because it was jokey <laughs> and it was funny and I, I i've always kind of related to like it was like kind of having a, um i wasn't into the comic book so much but dread zeppelin was like my musical comic book in a sense their albums were like cheech and chong records in a sense because it would be heartbreaker and the riff is there but then you got elvis doing elvis stuff and asking charlie hodge for a towel and crying and stuff or the guitar solo would shred so <laughs> so fast that the guitar player would blow up on the record and debris would fall down and stuff and so at, you know it's like an eighth grade or ninth grader i was just like this is amazing and so you know so that kind of as an adult and like i said i was doing this podcast i got the idea of like man what what is dread zeppelin up to and I looked them up and just, and saw that, you know, they were at the time still playing some shows. I was like, holy cow, man, that's, that's incredible. So I, I, a couple of, uh, you know, creative friends, partners of mine, we kind of got together and we were like, you know, and we both all had kind of connection with Dread Zeppelin. So we just decided to reach out to them and they said yes. And, um, and then we kind of went down to LA and shot, you know, multiple interviews with like, there's been a few few members over the years, as you can imagine. Right. I, I haven't looked <laughs> right. at their Wikipedia page, but I'm sure it's got like... Well, if the guitar player keeps blowing up, yeah, you know, that's right. going to be di- problematic. A, you know, very Spinal tap kind of thing. And that's, you know, truthfully, that is the kind of thing. It, it, there is an element of... What, what drew me into it is there's a satirical element to Dread Zeppelin. There's a commentary that was taking place with the quote-unquote like late stage Elvis... And just and the fact mm-hmm. that you could get a guy in an Elvis costume literally on not only MTV but CNN and Fox in 1990, and they're like interviewing <laughs> this guy, this 300 <laughs> pound dude with this big belt, and and so it just it kind of just had this crazy effect on me, and they blew up. Uh, the, back going back to 1990 when their career happened, they just blew up, and they were in Guitar World, and they were on MTV, they got signed to a three record deal. Uh, that you know everybody for that short period of time in between kind of the heavy metal era and the grunge era this band just appeared and because of the (laughs) internet and stuff they never really kind of transcended to the internet really in the you know the in the early 2000s say or mid 2000s when bands were kind of making an internet presence and so they kind of their story is kind of just one of those it's like a footnote to Led Zeppelin. And one of the yeah. things I should mention too is, is that Robert Plant, when they came out, the band basically, it was a joke. Like they were like, hey, let's let's do this band. We're going to show up at this, we're going to book a gig and we're called Dread Zeppelin. They had the name before they had any, they'd ever rehearsed <laughs> before they knew the guy was going <laughs> to sing as Elvis. They had this name and they booked a show and just on the name alone back in 1989, you could sell out a show just based on the fact that your band is called Dread Zeppelin. And so they sold out their first show. Right. And then their second show sold out. And then their third show. And about six six months into their them being a band, MTV shows up. And, you know, at the time, they're massive. That was when they were, like, really, you know, promoting bands and stuff. And they put them on, dressed in their goofy outfits, acting, acting silly. And they blew up and they got signed to IRS. And, you know, it's just, it's an incredible, wild story. And then, you know, they had 
implosions as a lot of bands do and a lot of things that parallel the real Elvis story. And, <laughs> and so anyway, um, so, uh, so that was what were you saying of, about Robert Plant though? Yeah. What, what did Robert Plant so do? He, when Ro- when what, they came out, Rob Ross Halfin, oddly enough, the photographer, a famous rock photographer was at a show of theirs in LA and uh, the guitar player, Joe Ramsey was like, kind of, he was like the real savvy business guy in the band. And he, I was like, oh shit, that's Ross Rob, Rob Hoffman. Uh, I, I got to give him a shirt. I got to give him a, you know, a record. And they had they had a seven inch at the time that was kind of like the cover of Led Zeppelin One, but it was that the famous picture of Elvis shaking hands with Richard Nixon, but instead of right instead of Richard Nixon, they put Bob Marley's face. <laughs> so so <laughs> Zeppelin One with the Elvis shaking hands. But anyway, so Robert uh, Ross was like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually photographing. Um, Robert Plant next week uh, for you know magazine cover, and so he gave him the stuff, and then sure enough, Ross Alvin gave it to Robert Plant, and 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 they were on the cover of I think it was Kerrang magazine, or Robert Plant was on the cor- cover of Kerrang magazine wearing a Dread Zeppelin shirt. And he's oh, that's amazing! That. And this band, this was like a garage band, and so they yeah. they became this massive, massive thing. It was just it was just kind of a, for me, it was just kind of like this wow, this incredible moment in time and i just thought you know when you're young you just think that that's how the world you know this crazy oddity stuff and you're just you kind of take it for granted and stuff and then it kind of went away and so it took me as an adult to be like man what was what was all that you know and so right so that so that was and and out of working on that film for four years chipson was i i started chipson i started posting stuff and and it was really that it was like out of working on that project, and so bringing us full circle. Now the the film hasn't been released, and I was like, well, maybe Chidson should release the film. <laughs> maybe so. Yeah. Why not? So that's that's kind of yeah. it. I've, I, we've had it. It's it's done. The biggest issue is is when you do a, any project that involves music by Led Zeppelin. Uh, you know, it becomes a, a sort of a, um, a tricky thing to to do anything, you know, especially with, you know, if you're trying to profit or make any, you know, money or anything like that. Uh, and not that we're trying to profit or make any money, <laughs> but... You're trying not to lose money, oh, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was... <laughs> yeah. we, we lost money. That ship of, sailed. Lost money out of the Yeah, game. that ship's already sailed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean I'll, if I'm successful, I'll continue to lose money on this for years. Uh, but... <laughs> but <laughs> But, you know, I mean, that was the thing, you know, we had in the early part of it, 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 it was going in that direction. We did have a distribution kind of deal offered to us and we did have people reaching out to want to do stuff. But that because of uh, the whole the music licensing issue uh, and Zeppelin and us, I mean, I'm just some goofball, right? Trying to put out a, a, a movie that, you know, I don't I didn't have like millions and millions of dollars to even entertain lawyers to entertain the, the, the idea right. so with that you know we've kind of been you know like i was saying maybe we should put it out and I, I think that's kind of the big kind of plan for us is to try to i wanted to do it last year but it, it things didn't kind of work out so that's the, kind of the big hope is to kind of get it out this year and you know tell the story and bring a bunch of uh new eyeballs to the whole Dread Zeppelin thing and 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 have a laugh and there's a lot of geeky you know funny stuff in there it's in terms of like guitar player jo- road jokes and humor and you know a lot of that stuff and uh Michael Starr from Steel Panther narrates it and uh it's a it's a wow yeah it's, nice. a, it's a good you'll see a lot of cameos and funny stories there's a good Metallica story in there I mean I have to tell you I mean like that band, not not this is supposed to be. I know it's supposed to be about chips and not Shred Zeppelin, <laughs> but uh, you know they. I just feel like they fit hand in hand and kind of in a way, parody and satire and all that stuff. The way the way that they kind of did it, and represented it, and had an effect on me is kind of why I feel like it kind of goes hand in hand with what we've been doing, chips and stuff. So, and I'll, well, I'll wrap it up I, with that. <laughs> I, I want to. Well, I wanted to talk about that specifically because. When I remember asking you at at the EQD party, I was like, so like what's the what's the end game? Like what are you trying to do? And you're like, I got this movie that I'm working on. And you explained yeah. all of that same stuff to me. Nobody 
this is like probably going to be the most public reveal of the fact that that's what's going on. You know, uh, that there is sort of a handshake deal, you know, that the two do kind of complement each other and go hand yeah. in hand. But I don't think that up until this point that that I've told other people, I'm like, you realize he's working on a movie about Dred Zeppelin? And people are like, what? I'm like, yeah, like that's right. I'm like, that's part of like the grand the grand plan is to get this movie out. And people are like, that's going to be amazing. How in the like. I would never would have nobody would make that connection. Yeah. You know? But now, once you say it that way, if people are familiar with Chibson, if they're familiar with the band at all, which I wasn't until you introduced me to him, and then I was Googling, right. you know, like what who is this band? <laughs> like, and I'm like, this makes so much sense. And I've been kind of waiting to hear, like, where is the movie? Because yeah. I could tell that you're you're really passionate about it. Like some people might find it silly, but like uh, I I find that there's, you know satire and jokes are underrated in my in my opinion for the amount mm-hmm. of pleasure that that stuff brings the world you know i think some people have a have a tendency to brush it off a little bit as not not a serious attempt at art and maybe it's not serious quote unquote it's not like a radiohead thing but right. it is there is still a lot of passion and effort that goes into it and when you told me, I asked you, I'm like, how long does it take you to make some of those graphics for the Chibson thing? You're like, oh, sometimes an hour, sometimes all day. Oh, I'm yeah. just like, wow. And it shows because it, they all, it, they all look really good. And the way that it resonates with people, the way that like guitarists and musicians uh, get it, you know what I mean? They, yeah. uh, they, they, they just saw them immediately. I think I, I think I saw it. I think the first Chibson thing I saw, I don't remember what specific post it was, but one of my friends sent it to me, and I think it maybe had like 1,500 followers at the time. I was like, oh, smash that follow button. Like, this is immediately a follow. (laughs) And then the next thing I know, next time I look, it's got like 50, and now I don't even know. You're at like 200 and something thousand. Yeah. It's become such a thing that like you people will reference Chibson and... At most guitarists in the gear world, they they're familiar with it at this point, and I think that's that's kind of a crazy thing to have accomplished. So good job. <laughs> I, I I really <laughs> honestly, man, I really do appreciate it because it's it's uh it it blows my mind. I mean, I really am. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I I've spent my whole life doing things right and trying for working very very hard. You know, play played music and worked really hard to get a little bit of success here and there and a little bit of feedback and that and everything that you do, you know, you, I, I've worked really, really hard at trying to do it. And with this kind of thing, I knew it was something different because I was like, you know, I, <laughs> I made the joke is like, you know, cause I, I failed at everything else. I was like, why is this thing, this thing feels <laughs> slightly different. There's a, a certain taste in my mouth. that's just slightly, but you know, I, I'm, I'm blown away by the whole thing because it's, you know, I never, I didn't set out to, um, to do any of it. Right. I, it was all kind of accidental. Like, and, and, you know, I was saying, I was just doing all this other stuff in my life. And, and the one thing that is deep in my DNA or whatever, is just like, be, you know, being musical and playing music and thinking about, you know, I, melodies and recording and, I, you know, I just, I just, since like the age of whatever, 12, 10, you know, I've just been kind of musical guy. Right. And I've been a goofball. So it's like, yeah. these two, two things competing <laughs> for attention. And, uh, so, it, so to be able to do something and, and have people share it and, and like it and comment on it and, and, and have it cheer them up and re- resonate. It, it, it's so, it blows my mind. It, it's so, um, uh, I have no words for it, honestly, because it's, it's, I don't, I don't, I'm very, I I, I don't know. I, I appreciate it all, you know? I mean, and, and, and the hardest part about it is, is that, you know, I want it to be, I want it to be good. Right. I care very, very much about every post. Like I, I don't, I don't like, um, <laughs> that sounds so stupid too. I care about every post, <laughs> but I, I, can't, well, I, literally I, care I get about it though. The, I get the work it. That, uh, that I'm doing the work involved in like, the jokes and stuff and and there's time you know there's issues too with like time constraints because i um put a lot of work into each thing daily and then i'm trying to get it out because i have set some 
goofball thing in my head that tells me I gotta I gotta do this every day and I gotta and you know demand myself demand this much whatever out of me and so I do end up spending there's days where you know you do I've spent I'm not I'm not proud of it, like uh, I spent like six six <laughs> six at eight hours on a on a post you know I'm completely and not that it's about money or anything but it's like completely totally free you know like completely just because i'm i love it i love it so much and mm-hmm. i wake up every morning and i'm like well, let's do this like I, I i i'm excited about it and then i post it and then instagram takes take, takes care of the rest and they just squash <laughs> my dreams and they just no <laughs> that's right yeah just, they just they just say we will not show yeah, this to anyone. Like, this it's not. Great. It's not making anyone. It's not making anyone angry. We must right, not right. show it I to anyone. Huge yeah, <laughs> stick this right under. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's that's a whole other. That's a whole other uh, podcast. But um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I I do look. I, just to close on that, I, I love doing it, and it blows my mind that it re- has reached people. And you know, this morning there was a thing on Premier Guitar. I did a thing for. Uh, the Corey Wong's podcast and premiere guitar with John Mayer. And uh, I right? saw that. And that's, that was awesome. You know, I mean, to think about where it all started and then just being able to have the opportunity to do that's like, for me, is just like, <laughs> that's, it's wild. And, you know, accumulatively, all that stuff is just like, it's, it's just super, uh, it's a thrill, man. It's like, I don't think I could have done that. Like, you know, finger tapping at the whatever talking head or something in Baltimore or something, whatever, <laughs> you know, so. Dude, like, is, this is a little bit of a tangent that I, I don't necessarily want to travel too deep down, but isn't it kind of weird? Even just go back, you know, the five years ago, say on your first couple posts or whatever. Isn't it weird to like fast forward to now and think about like, John Mayer is looking at something that I did for him. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, whoa. And, you know, not that John Mayer is any more important than anybody else, but it's just kind of crazy. He's got a lot of eyeballs. He's got a lot of attention. And he's got a lot of respect in the music world. And it's kind of crazy to think. I mean, even with this podcast, sometimes I'll get messages from people that I'm like, you listen yeah, to the show? Yeah. Like, okay. Like, that's not making me self-conscious at all. Uh, <laughs> I hope I didn't say anything bad. Right, right, right. <laughs> no. Uh, but it's just kind of crazy to think when once you do just put things out there and you do it consistently enough for long enough, you never know who it's going to reach and what it's going to do for either for your career or just for, you know, a personal, like a personal, like that was a cool moment yeah. in your life. You never know. Just putting stuff out there is the reoccurring theme of this podcast. And I find that n- n- even even still, after s- people seeing all of these examples of cool things that can happen from it, people are still scared to just put stuff right. out there. And I think that's that's so the key to any any level of success whatsoever. You got to try it. You got to throw it at the wall and see Absolutely. what sticks. Most of it's not, most of it's not going to. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's you know, fine. I find that, uh, you know, also one of the things about just, being creative and putting things out there too is, is that time does an interesting thing with stuff because things might not, you know, with the beauty of like the in- Instagram and social media and things, you know, people things might not find their audience when you first put them out. And, uh, right. but, but more, less about that, but more just on a literal thing. I mean, you've seen that with albums and music and bands and things like that uh, in that world. And, and I feel like it's, it's, you know, sometimes just having the stuff out there and also being able to go back and look at it and with hindsight and say, wow, this is, this actually has a different, you know, it has different meaning or it takes on a different meaning in w- when you look at stuff in time. And, you know, and, and, and that's, that too is just kind of like a, a big, uh, you know, it's interesting. Like I, we, I, I made the comparison, you were talking about five years of start, starting this thing five years ago. And it's, it's, interesting for me to think about how like somebody who may have uh, followed Chipson four years ago in ninth grade is now like graduating high school. I'm like, wow, it's like, right. Oh, right. <laughs> it blows my mind. You know, I'm like, wow, I can't, yeah, all time and anything uh, re- related to time and uh, space. Uh, it is, it just like blows me, blows me away at this point. <laughs> T- time in, 
I mean, this applies to everything. Like time in public view or time in market is something that I think is not quite talked about that much, honestly. Yeah. It's something that uh, my partner Scott and I from Stringjoy, we have been talking about a lot lately because that company's been going for a little over seven wow. years now, I think. And it just now feels like we're really making like real a real dent in the marketplace, right. you know? And we keep talking about like, why is why is that? Why does it just feel like now we don't have to explain who we are to every single person that we yeah. meet? Now it's more like, oh yeah, I've heard of you before, at least somewhere. Right, and, right. Uh, and, I, and now and we keep going back to it, it's just time. There's no shortcut for just being around for a yeah. while. That's, it, it, it's that's so huge. And, and also just the education you get from existing. And go, I mean, comedy's like that, right? So when you're when people start to do, people are always like, have said, how do you comedy, man? I'd be so afraid to get on stage, right? <laughs> it, it was always like a, yeah. a common thing. And the reality of comedy was is is the repetition of it, right? It's 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 the length of time. The I, I don't really like the ten thousand hours concept thing as much. I don't know why. I think I just don't like it because it's out there. <laughs> but you know, but it, 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 yeah, ten thousand. I'm sure. But like, however many hours it takes, but the repetition of doing anything and just and and, and if it acu- if you accumulate uh, years and you're doing something kind of continually, you're going to kind of do every scenario or almost any kind of scenario to prepare you. And so like, when I think about com- comedy, when I was at the height of me doing comedy all the time, there was nights where I was doing like two and three sets a night, every night for five, six nights. And when, mm-hmm. you know, when I was like deep, deep, deep into it, and as you, know, as you had, there's no alternative. I couldn't like sit at home and watch a YouTube video on comedy or, or look up the tab. No on how to write a show, you know, or do any of that stuff. So you had to do it. So it was just like, you know, but anyway, and that's, that's, that kind of happens, you know, it's like, you won't gain that experience. You won't gain the hindsight and you have to, you have to suck, you know, at comedy, yep. you have to go up and, and, you know, suck and suck for a long time and, and learn how, you know, get bruised and get back up and, you know, get heckled or whatever, you know, <laughs> But yeah, comedy takes a special kind of of grit that I don't think a lot of people understand. I barely understand it. Some of the those meetings I've seen I recently, can, they, they don't get it either. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I just see like, I, you know, I the only experience I have with comedy is I I'm decent at riffing in conversation. Yeah. You know, I can I can pull some zingers on Wampler on Chasing Tone once in a while, and that sometimes they're sometimes they're kind of funny. But to sit down and write out a whole, even geez, I think I tried to do what I tried to do five minutes for a good friend of mine's like small backyard. Like we had like I don't know like fifty people yeah. there, and we were roasting him, roasting him for his thirtieth right. birthday, and I bombed so hard, <laughs> and I'm not somebody. That is scared of public speaking. I'm pretty okay with public yeah. speaking. I'm okay with with all of that. And I was so I don't think I've ever been more nervous standing in front of people than when I was trying to be funny. And I super wasn't. Oh, funny. Yeah. It was it's, not funny at all. Yeah, it's, it's you know it's also kind it's of like the so nerve wracking thing. I do that with chips and stuff where it's like we'll work on something for a while and then not be like, man, I really ha- I'm so happy with this, and then go and. You know, you you think, oh man, this is gonna do, this is gonna do well. It's gonna do. People like, <laughs> are gonna love this, and uh, and then it's like, <laughs> you know, nothing. And it's it's the, same, it's the same type of thing. I think I remember doing comedy. I mean, the, how to tell jokes and the structure. There's an actual structure to set, you know, setting up a joke and punchlines and thing and and different types of jokes. And and I didn't know any of that stuff too. I mean, I I'd been my brother was a, older brother was a comedian for many years, and so. When I was in high school and stuff, I used to go sneak into comedy clubs and see him. And this is like in the '90s and stuff, and see him do shows and stuff. So I was like all always around it, and I kind of understood it and understood the comedian cadence. Where like ah, yeah, da, 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 you know, like, but you know, but <laughs> it was actually once once I started to get on stage and 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 embarrass myself publicly for for months on end. You're like, man, I gotta figure out. <laughs> some structure <laughs> like, why is everybody else 
to get the laugh part, you know? I remember the first time I remember I told a joke and it succeeded and I actually got a laugh. Like, I didn't know how to, like, I didn't know how to comprehend it. Like, ah, you know, like, I just proceeded to talk, yeah. talk over <laughs> the laughter. It was, like, foreign to me. I was starting to get comfortable to, with the silence, so. But, yeah. Yeah. So, side sidetracking from that a little bit, I did have some specific things I wanted to talk to you about. And one of them was was this the first time i saw a chips and post i thought that's great and then my next thought was hmm i wonder how the big g is going to feel about this you know yeah. and it seems like uh as a company and the and the public people who are associated with the company they seem to have fully embraced it they seem at least outside looking in it seems like they're on board for the ride and on board for the joke is that was that a worry or a concern or? Um, how did that you end know, up happening? That's a, that's, that's a good, uh, I think that's a question that a lot of people ask me a lot. And, uh, and, and honestly, they, you know, it's, it's funny. I mean, I, I, of course was in the early days kind of nervous about like, I just didn't, you know, I've always wanted to do something positive. Right. And I never wanted to be, to do something. I see a lot of accounts, parody accounts or meme accounts and they're, they, they got a thing, they got an ax to grind kind of thing and they're kind of like sticking it to the man type of thing, which is awesome and fine. Uh, I just, and there's an element to me that is that, but I never looked at Gibson as like my target. Like I, I never right. looked at them as like, they're the bad guy. My first guitar was a Gibson. Like, I don't, like, you know, like I'm not, <laughs> I, I don't, I, and also I, I, it, it'd just be it's just I, I don't I don't really like to do like bashing on anybody you know and 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 especially companies and people and stuff you know we all have good and bad days and uh, you know I never looked at Chipson as this platform of like yeah yeah now I'm gonna you know show you <laughs> I'm gonna show you <laughs> with these pixels yeah um <laughs> so you know what I mean like I, I it just that was never my thing and my thing is always kind of like more about like can I make Gibson laugh and can I entertain them and can I do something positive and can I uh point you know take some of the heat away from some of not that you know well I mean again I'm not you know that huge or whatever but, but you know like take some of the whatever away from it kind of bring a different voice into the conversation a little bit with Gibson of, of kind of talking about, you know, there's all these guitar companies, all these businesses and all this stuff that isn't, you know, there, there's voices that aren't kind of represented in the jokey space in terms of like being able to be, you right. can talk, you know, satire and parody you can talk about stuff that you kind of in a, in a joke or reference things in a joke that you maybe can't talk about otherwise. And so, you know, I, I think there's a lot of nervousness with other companies. Uh, there's nervousness with me because I didn't want to offend anybody or do anything kind of dumb or stupid. But I think over time, and this goes back to what we were saying earlier, I think over time I've, I've, I've tried to graciously demonstrate. Is it okay if I say graciously? I've tried to, <laughs> I've tried to demonstrate, <laughs> you know, with grace not to be a dick and not to be... Um, that my intention is not that my intention is not to be a guitar company. My intention is not to, uh, do anything to basic. I don't want to offend anybody, man. I, I, I love the music and art and artists and all, you know, these, I love all the companies, you know I mean? I love everybody. And so to get the support from like Gibson, like from Mark, uh, Agnesi, who works here, mm -hmm. you know, it's been awesome. And it's been, and honestly, it's been, uh, of a huge kind of support throughout the whole thing. And so it's like, you know, um, so yeah, I, I, it's, it's been, it's been positive. I mean, I, one day I hopefully, you know, we'll get to do something funny together or something like that. But, you know, um, but no, yeah, they, so far, you know, everything has been, uh, has, has been positive, you know? <laughs> so. Right. Right. So, so there's another thing, and I think you probably have seen this because I think people have actually tagged the account in some mm. of this. And this is, I take this with a great deal of pride yeah. that uh, that this comparison is being made. So when we, when Big Ear and I launched the Slice of Pie, oh, pedal, right, right, right. I, I, a lot of people 
were being were tagging in the comments like, I thought this was a Chibson product. <laughs> right. And I was like, yes. Because <laughs> like that's funny. Because you because I know how much detail you put into every aspect of your posts that you create. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, it's done. We've done it. It's translated. Because <laughs> because it because we put so much into yeah, that yeah. that seems that seems it's into such a like kind of a silly concept that uh, you know some people didn't get a lot of people did and we just over overthought everything and so seeing that comparison made and like hearing you say like well sometimes I'll spend six hours on a post I'm like okay because you'd already told me that before uh, I was. I was really happy that those comparisons uh -huh, were made. That's I great. thought that was. Uh, I don't know if they were trying to be what they were trying to say by that, but I took it. As I, you, it's that's it's for so sure. funny because I see that. So sometimes I feel bad. Like I'll see somebody, you know, because for example, like I, I don't have a specific example because it, it, it happens <laughs> it happens a, a little more times than not. Um, but you see somebody who puts out some kind of unique take. Uh, a modern take on a guitar and people are like this looks like mm -hmm. a and i feel bad like i feel like ah, oh, i don't think that, you know like i want to chime in like i don't know don't i think they mean that in a good way <laughs> you know? um, but yeah so i mean that's is that that to me is, is cool to me to just think that it's you know that there's something to you know that the chitson has gotten to a point to where that's a compliment, you know, to that's, that's, yeah. it's super rad to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was fun. I didn't really think about it until people started pointing out, I'm like, this does very much look like something that Chipson would post. I never right. even thought about it till just now. And I'm like, I love that. That's well, so we'll good. We'll send you a cease that's... and desist for toggle ring. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I don't know if you, I, oh. I, this is not for the, this is for the, uh, the home audience, but I don't know if you see this, but. That's the uh, oh yeah the, I've, I have seen that I love it the 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 we uh I might I might have to get one of those I love that <laughs> so where do you see and maybe you don't know have an answer for this but where do you see this going Our you have a, a oh yes yes you and I where are we going <laughs> Sorry. Uh, different podcast, is that gonna so. are we going steady are we going steady now is that <laughs> I hope Play so cards right I hope so <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you like guitars by chance? <laughs> I, uh, I have some. <laughs> Do you like to change strings? Right. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm sorry. This isn't going to work out. <laughs> you can cut this part of it. <laughs> I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's. I'm not going to. I don't cut things out of this. I very rarely cut anything out of this podcast. Is that right? It okay. is, uh, I, just, I wonder. Yeah, it's, it's it's very very uncommon. It's happened, and it, and the few times it's happened, it's been like. Oh, maybe I, maybe I, I thought that joke was funny, and then I listened back, and it was in really poor taste, and it's on oh, my part. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, oh, well, hey, or uh, self-editing, you know. Yeah, I'm like, ooh, that's not funny. That's just bad. <laughs> that's only happened once. But you, the only other edits are like, oh no, I the guest's like, I told you this date, and it actually comes right, out on this date. Right. So can you cut that? You know, which is that's fine. I was that gonna say, if you, you know, anything. a good trick, an industry trick. Uh, that I use is uh, if you know the if you're doing a podcast and the joke bombs, you just pipe in that laughter. You just pipe in, <laughs> you just, ah, you just pipe in yeah. that laughter, fixes it right up. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, see, listen to how funny yeah, that is. Geez. Yeah, that's just pipe. Just it works pipe on. <laughs> it works on young Sheldon. Oh wait, no, it doesn't. That doesn't work on young Sheldon. <laughs> the jokes are still not funny on young Sheldon. Sorry, anybody that's writing for young Sheldon. Um, where was I going? That so, totally. Yeah. So you, you were, I think you were I you were asking me. I think something about the future. Oh yeah, yeah. Where do you see the Chibson thing ultimately going? I know you want to release the yeah. movie, and that's obviously going to be a very strong promotional tool for it. But once that happens, I feel like there's there's more meat on the bone. There's more to be done. What do you think? I, what do you think's next? I think. Um, well, there's a lot of things that are planned. It's so funny because there, there's so much stuff that I work on besides just the posts and stuff. Um, and so there's a lot of things in the in the works at the moment. Uh, you know, things with 
other companies and stuff and partnership, not partnerships, but like collaborative kind of creative stuff. Um, and, but ultimately, you know, that's been the thing is looking at this. I've always kind of looked at it as like, wow, this is, you know, reactionary in a, in a way. And in, in a lot of ways, chips and kind of happened and it started to grow and it started to kind of drag me with it. And so mm-hmm. I was just like, wow. So I kind of, I, I spend so much time now, you know, looking at and thinking about and analyzing it, that I've kind of been being able to see things kind of come down the road. You know, I've been able to look ahead and be like, I think this is going to start to happen here or this, that kind of stuff. So I've, I've been fortunate in that as I've watched it grow, I've seen certain things happen. And so one of the biggest things on the, on, on my mind, obviously with the movie is, is just getting, you know, a lot of the chips in is, is still images, primarily most of the bulk of the content thus far has just been the still image. And as we were joking about Instagram earlier, the, the reality of it is, is that all artists and content creators, podcasters, uh, YouTubers, we are all kind of at the whim of these platforms that we use, these free platforms that we download and some, some, you know, hit yes to the terms and service. So because of that, we kind of have to be savvy and figure out, well, how, how are we going to navigate our businesses or our brands or whatever? And so that's kind of been mm-hmm. the, a big unexpected aspect of of this whole thing you know it's like besides the guitars and fun and games and how do i get this turkey inside of this acoustic or whatever that i do like <laughs> part of it is, is how can i how can i uh make chips and you know bring it into the real world and, and, and include other people and 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 you know i've, I've had two years of being kind of intensely locked down and focusing in on um not only that, but, you know, getting better at what I'm doing, learning other stuff, networking with other people and, and trying to grow. So sorry for my long winded answer, but the, the I really see this going out, so taking all of these assets and all the stuff that I've created in the last five years with everyone here um, and using that in, in terms of doing a lot more gr- uh, motion stuff, a lot more video stuff, I see in the very, very near future, us setting up an actual official chips and headquarters and doing and actually having Ooh. a location. So where, where we can work out of and we can shoot stuff and, and artists uh, can come to us and we can shoot stuff together and have bands play and do th- just provide that kind of a platform for other creative artists and people that we want to kind of work with. And it's a studio that, you know, it has room and you can be loud and to do things and, and that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And just, mm-hmm. I, so I see that being on the initial horizon. And then, you know, looking again, looking at the platform stuff, you know, the still image, as I was saying, is, is kind of being shut down. And so it forces us to have to um, take what we've done and, and implement it in different ways and, uh, and not being so dependent on the platforms. We just launched chipson.com. And so my hope is to really start making content that's website centric that I can share to Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and all of that stuff. But it, there's more meat on the bone coming from us. And I don't rather than Instagram deciding who gets to see what on what day for no reason, you know what I mean? So that's kind of, you know, I'd lo- I want to do more films and, and I'd like to do more um of those types of projects but i i i feel like the 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 next thing is setting up our shop and then uh and then bringing people on board and and so that's kind of hopefully where i see it i I really i i have always envisioned chips in as like a it there it's like kind of like the there's a commonality between musicians who we all have a sense of a like-mindedness sense of humor and how can we how can we bring that how can we make that bigger and how can we spread that you know, positivity and, and, you know, and, and, and then, so that's kind of hopefully where I see it going, you know, that's, that's, that's what I'm have my eyes on. So. Yeah. It sounds, sounds to me like if I'm, if I'm reading all that, right, you're, you're very much looking to take it into more of a multimedia 
company type of approach where you you got your fingers doing producing all kinds of different things versus primarily the viral still images, which I think still yeah. work. Uh, it just it's it is we are starting to live in a video world, um, which is kind of weird for me because and I've said this so many times on the podcast, listeners are probably tired of it, but I've always tried to just make stuff that I want, you know, and I've been very self-serving with like, I listen to a lot of po- podcasts yeah, and never once can I remember a time where I fired up YouTube to watch a podcast of people talking. Right. Like I like, I like podcasts. I like listening to them in my headphones while I do things. Uh, I listen to a lot of it, but I, I'm, been shown time and time again that I'm wrong about that, which is why I'm starting to collect these videos. And if yeah. I ever have a little more breathing room, I'm going to get them edited and posted to YouTube because while I may not like that, there are millions of people who do. And there's no reason to cut myself off from those people just because I don't like that format that well. Yeah. I just, I still don't understand it, but you know, I don't have to understand you, it. They you, understand. You bring it. up a good point because, you know, mm. thinking about TikTok, it's like I didn't, when I started to work on Instagram stuff, I'd sworn off like Instagram. I was like, ah, I'm done, man. I'm done social media. Like, I'm done. Right. And then I just made the, I made <laughs> right. the Chipson account on the, really on a whim. Like, my, had somebody like called me like 20 minutes before I made the Chipson account? Like, the, well, the whole trajectory of this, <laughs> this whole thing could have been different, right? <laughs> I made it on a whim and it took off or whatever. But it was, we're living in such a crazy, interesting time you know, politics and stuff aside, just in technology where things are so dramatically crazy, where I'm sure you and I are, you know, probably similar in age where we remember a time prior to the internet and prior to all the stuff. And now, you know, this whole thing is based on social media. It couldn't have happened without social media. Right. So it's, it's, it's kind of like, a, right. uh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's such a, it's such a, um, a, a strange time to kind of, <laughs> me seeing this stuff and so with when we started the movie we were in the mindset of film man we were in the mindset of like we're gonna go show this at a theater right you know what i mean like we're like <laughs> right. like, like it's like yeah I, I don't know like it's the you know 50s or something we're gonna we're gonna go and you know we're gonna get the projector <laughs> out and you know and sell tickets and we're gonna you know sell popcorn or whatever like we literally thought that that was kind of where we were approaching it and so and i was like oh the heck with instagram and all this stuff and so now here we are now even instagram is now desperately trying to be tiktok you we're, right. we're all kind of like in this uh <laughs> we're the users of this platform that was initially i mean there's a picture of like a, a like a camera uh, in the Instagram logo, because it used to be about still images and photos, and they're like, "We got it," <laughs> and so you know, I mean, the whole thing is yep. screwed. So we have to kind of adapt. And and if you're if you're not, I could still be this joker six years later trying to get into a, a theater that no one's going to show up to anyway, trying to spend millions of dollars to try to get licensing for Driver Led Zeppelin songs. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, and so. It's it's unfortunate, but it's like, man, that is that. So that, so again, and I've seen the writing on the wall. I remember being like, man, one day, man, this whole thing of Instagram, Facebook, and all this stuff, which has been, which we were able to build this thing out of, is not going to be there uh, eventually for us and other people. What happens when, yeah, you know, the new the new Friendster shows up, right? And everybody's <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> you know. So it's you that- kind of have to. Um, not be dependent on that. And so that's, that's kind of the biggest, uh, the biggest thing is to outgrow all that stuff and be bigger than your dependency on these, these social media, you know, platforms and stuff. Poof. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's an important thing. I think social media is an amazing tool that I've certainly used to benefit my career and other people certainly can too. Yeah. But I do think it is a wise decision for brands, bands, artists, creators of any type to try to, as much as possible, get back some of the control from that stuff. That's why there's a text chat that goes along with this podcast is because I was so sick of like people who wanted to be able to chat with me and I wanted to be able to chat with them about something specific that's on the show or something that's kind of unrelated, but they they are interested in hearing from me. 
And then it just gets buried in the algorithm, buried in the algorithm. Yeah. And so that was the main reason I started the text chat. And that's been like one of the best things outside of the show itself that I've done is start that. And people, it's not for everybody. Some people don't want to get text messages from me and I don't blame them. <laughs> I'm kind of dumb. But like some people do. Yeah. And it's been really fun and a cool way to engage with people. And I'm not doing it like a, like you might have seen from a, a brand where it's like, get 15% off of the, your Aquafresh toothpaste or whatever. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, hey, it's either I made a thing. Here's the thing that I made. Or it's like, hey, what's going on? What do you think about this? And then we just start talking. You know, I'll send that one message out to everybody. And then every thread's individual with just with me and that person. So I send them a, a initial text to get the conversation yeah. started. And then I might go back and forth with everybody in there for two hours. You know, and I respond to everybody and it's been amazing. And the other great thing about podcasting is somehow, and I think this is this is both good and bad, it's always been way less dependent on algorithms. It's yeah. basically like you find a show, you subscribe to it in whatever app you use, and every time a new show comes out, you get notified that hey, new show's out. Right. Um it's, it's and whereas like you can put something out into YouTube and even though you're subscribed on YouTube, you, you may not see it. See it. You don't get yeah. notified. Yeah. Right. And so, and so it's and you're so dependent on that initial when the thing goes up too. So it's like if you Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> Yeah. It's 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 such a weird thing. But like all that all that to say between the two of us, for any creators that are listening, once you do you social media is the easiest place to start getting traction. Yeah. But once you do start getting traction, try to get uh wrench some control back in yeah. some way, shape, or form to the best of your ability to communicate with the people that want to hear from you. That's, I guess, the long, longest that's a, that's way a, to yeah, say that's that. A great way to, it's, a, it's a great way to put it and to kind of like have a... Being able to have different lines of communication to the... to Because, you know, people don't see half, a quarter. I mean, I... Not that, and I don't want to talk about get into the statistical uh data but it's 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 very it's a bummer to go into when you start looking at it and, and also like i i use instagram as a in, as a um uh, you know that's like kind of the basis of a lot of this conversation but like when you look at the stats on instagram it literally says in the fine print uh that these stats are all uh it's all it's all estimate and that to not base any right. business decisions on these statistics it literally <laughs> says that and so if you're all like well why is that a thing and call it the word stats <laughs> why call it something else like call it magic right you know or make believe <laughs> or something dreams you know but uh and so and then then you know now i'm just complaining about a platform but it's it, it's infuriating to ha be given a gift from something and then also to have the gift be manipulated and whatever. And, it, you know, I, I liken it to, it to mm -hmm. imagine working and putting out an album. And then it's that whole thing of you get, the, you know, a ton of spins and then your check for six bucks rolls through. And you're like, from yeah, your and you're streaming like, Wait, service. What? And you're like, <laughs> yeah. awesome. You know, let's yeah. go to yeah. which drive through should we spend this at, you know, or whatever. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, so you know, yeah. I, I don't know. That's that's something that's new and on the horizon, and it's. I think it's something that we have to tackle, and I think everybody has to kind of. It sucks, man. It sucks to have to think about that now, as a component of like, oh, there's this other element. There's this one other obstacle. So, but I think, uh, you know, but I, I and I talked about this on the recent uh, Chasing Tone podcast. I think that will almost be out by the time this drops. I can't remember. But we had a uh, we had a uh, a guest on who was talking about a lot of this stuff. Try how to how to make you know your music career in twenty twenty two, and and we we both made it like we we kind of came to a similar point of you know especially with music, uh, it's never been easy to make a full time living as an artist. It doesn't matter if we're talking about pre streaming or post streaming. Only very very few people as a as a percentage of all the people trying to do it, have ever made it to the point where it was their full-time right. living. And even then, most of those people aren't strictly just producing the art that they're making and living off of that. Most of them are doing that and then also uh, you know, running sound for their friends. Maybe they would work part-time at a, a guitar shop setting right. up guitars. Like Maybe they 
you know, mix albums uh, as well. Like maybe they do whatever. They do a handful of things. I've met very, very few people in the music industry that don't wear a ton of different hats to be able to put food on the table, myself included. And that's fine. I just think that the general public isn't as aware of that as they probably should be. Yeah. And everybody sees anybody, they're like, oh, you're a full-time musician. You must be rich. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a weird <laughs> yeah. myth, too, is, you know, success. And, you know, people know your thing or your name or whatever. People auto- automatically assume, well, gosh, you must be, <laughs> you know, you must be rich. <laughs> Where's your Rolls Royce or, or whatever, you know, that kind of. Yeah, you got you have 10,000 followers on Instagram. You must be loaded. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's 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 quite interesting. Well, and it's it's also kind of funny because there's like the illusion and 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 the myths of like say the holdovers too, of like rock and roll hold, holdovers and you know, there's a weird mm-hmm. demystifying element that social media kind of has uh too, you know, too. And it's like this <laughs> it's kind of like this weird weird kind of uh world where you know people think that it's you know that there's some easy trick to success and fame or to to do whatever and or that you know once you're quote unquote you've reached some finish line that you don't have to work anymore and that you just like are counting <laughs> money sorry man you know t- you know cancel all my uh calls i gotta count this stack of cash over here <laughs> <laughs> for the next decade right? yeah you know so yep yep uh, it's yeah, it's it's kind of social media has it. It's a weird thing because some people call it a, a highlight reel, and I think that's yeah. true. Like I don't post anything. Like if I'm having a rough time, I'm not posting about it on social <laughs> media. And a, a because I don't think it's helpful, and B because I don't think it, it it's not helpful for me, and it's not helpful for the people following me to say like, yeah, man, I'm 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 going through yeah. some stuff right You're now. You're like, let like, me drain the audience uh, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I'll handle it and get through it, right? Um, but it, so people will say like it's a highlight reel, none of it's real. I'm like, I think most of it's real. Yeah. It's just people aren't sharing the entirety of their lives. So then these young kids will see everyone else having this great fun and look at oh look at Kelly's got her new Mercedes that her dad bought her. Right. And blah, blah, blah. Like oh why don't why is my life not that way? And I know people who have expressed this. They're like, my son thinks that this is what life is and it's yeah. not. It's like, yeah, Kelly, Kelly might have got a new Mercedes or a used Mercedes, but her dad might have went into, you know, <laughs> massive debt to do that yeah. for her. Like, you don't really yeah, know like what's going on. Vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe rented they rented it, it for a picture. A lot, <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's just the car in the corner. <laughs> it just... Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, have you ever seen, there's an account, what is it, uh, Influencers in the Wild? Have you seen that? Oh, yeah. yes. And it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, that it's, is like kind of, I don't know, if you, I have a pers- my personal Jason USA account, and it's and it's been compared a little bit to, <laughs> to that, <laughs> uh, you know, demanding the uh, the admiration and success that uh, I, <laughs> I deserve kind of thing. Uh, and, but um yeah, I mean, it's it, it's interesting too. I mean, I guess I think it, it comes back to maybe it's full circle. It comes back to the age thing too. It's like you know, seeing a world without computers and iPads and stuff, and then being fast forward mm-hmm. twenty years, and then you know, you've we've seen a decade or so now of kids who are literally raised by an iPad. So it's a, it's a we're entering into some scientific future stuff <laughs> and, 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 no, and no one knows if it's good or bad they're just like man this is just going to be exciting buckle up <laughs> it's it's that's true like we are going to have to be like responsible for educating our children that like like we probably have to show them the influencers in a wild account yeah. like look like i know what you thought you saw was this this beautiful woman doing whatever you know on a beach somewhere and it's like the real reality is she's got a tripod set up stuck in the sand and she's twerking next to somebody trying to enjoy yeah. their dinner. And like, that's what's sounds, really going sounds on. Like, <laughs> sounds like heaven. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'll tell you this, a quick anecdote. Is, uh, I, uh, had, uh, I was in the presence of um, a child who was probably turning six, seven years old and it was her party and uh, they had presents uh, to open. And... Um, when it was time, they were asking what, you know, if it was time to open the presents, but she had said, uh, uh, is it time to unbox my presents? 
<laughs> and can you? I mean, I, I'd be crying. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to. You know, I'm not trying. I'm not saying anything. I'm just relaying to you what the child said. But it's just <laughs> you take with right. The, take what you will with that. But it's just amazing that mm-hmm. that that is the power of what's happening in our world and and how dramatically how power the power of influence and all this stuff and it's it's it is seriously fascinating and scary and uh you know a little <laughs> and a smidge frightening <laughs> <laughs> well there, there's a good here's a good example of that and then i got to get into the classic questions oh, before yes, we wrap for this, sure, for this sure. section of the podcast up but uh uh i you brought it up that and i just can't i think about this every time i'm at my mom's house <laughs> so rewind to the early 2000s i got my first cell yeah. phone uh Basically because it was cheaper to get a family plan than whatever plan they were on. So I got a Nokia cell phone. And, you know, I was like, sweet. I can play Snake and I can text right. girls. Like, this is going to be awesome, right? And so I did just that primarily. <laughs> Played Snake and texted girls, you know, at 2 in the morning when I was supposed to be asleep. And then, you know, my parents get the bill. Uh, and at that time, all the text messages are, they show what time right. they were sent. And to, and to what she's phone like, number? She's like, you got an illegal like, operation. <laughs> yeah, she's like, what are you, who are you texting at two in the morning? I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, it was just this uh, this girl and that, that girl. And she's like, why are you texting girls at two in the morning? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not tired and I'm a young teenage boy. If that's all I want to do is talk yeah, to right. girls. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> and so, you know, they were very not okay with that because, you know, we want to know who, where you're at and who you're talking to, they, you know, like in a good way. They were just like, listen, we want you, we want to have a little more c- control over this situation. And I think about that every time that I go, first of all, every time, almost every time my mom texts me now, but also whenever I go over to their house and she's got a, she's got a plaque and I love my mother to death, but I just find this, this, it's more about this evolution of mindset over time, right? She's got a plaque sitting on her like shelf that says like hashtag grandma life. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, we go from don't you text anybody ever to we're using hashtags in yeah. real life now. <laughs> like it's such a strange, this is not a critique of, on my mom right, right. at all. This is just like more speaking about how society has just grown and gotten weird. Like the unboxing thing. Can we unbox the That's presents right. now? Who said unboxing prior to you? Right, right. I know. I Nobody. feel like if I ever in the, in, in the presence of a uh, a YouTuber on their birthday, I feel like they'd probably say the same thing. Though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll know because they're setting up their cameras yeah. for their like, unboxing. Oh, videos. another yeah. light ring. Put it. Put it on the pile. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jason. Uh, we got to get to the classic questions and wrap up this part of the episode before we get into Patreon. But uh, before we do that, I like to give the guests opportunity to, you know, plug anything they want to plug, shout out their grandma, mm. uh, just say anything that you want to say to a couple thousand people right now. This is a, the time to do okay. it. Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody for listening and getting this far into the podcast without turning it off. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> um, and um, I was just going to say chipson.com. We just launched the website in December. Uh, we have some products and stuff up there, like the Whammy Bar. Uh, the, the wild whammies, uh, as we call them, yes. the Whammy Davis Jr. four foot whammy bar. Uh, <laughs> our cease and desist toggle rings, our chips and activity book, uh, their sticker packs. We have articles and things, um, and we're going to be adding a lot more to it. Presumably, that's when we uh, launch the film. That's probably going to be where the film is going to be residing um, before it gets, you know, released to the world for free. Um, so that's that's pretty mm-hmm. much it. And then, you know, obviously, uh, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all of those places are you'll find the chips in USA out there. So that's, that's, that's nice. and, and, and then you can and if you want, you can follow me and my uh, personal exploits at uh, Jason underscore USA underscore official. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, and by the way, and you'll recognize it because the f- very first post is a uh, is 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 my um, I found a fake Jason USA and I had to call him out very very first. Okay, first very post, nice. Just very in nice. case you're first post. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this? Is a fake. Anyway, sorry. Uh, but that's about yeah. That, those are my links. <laughs> cool, cool. All right. First question: What is your favorite boss pedal? Favorite boss pedal is probably the tuner, chromatic tuner. TU2, TU3? Uh, Which one? I got to look. It's got, where is it? 
hold on. My, it's sitting over there. I think it's the TO2. It's the old one, the, the classic, right? TO2? Yeah. All right, we'll go with that. That is uh, probably, it's probably become like the most popular answer to that question. I guess I probably shot, should have seen that coming, but didn't really see it coming. Yeah. Uh, because I, I don't use a TU3 or TU2. It's, it's kind of, is that right? Well, I, you know, I've, I've had it. It's important. It's in the workers. I mean, I also have the. I have to clip on headstock ones too, but I've, I, that was just, I've had that thing for ever. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. know, 15, 20 I, years. Ago. I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the first pedal tuner. If I, huh. if I remember correctly, I think so. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it was. I'll have to yeah. Google that later. But we'll get, get Josh all right, Scott final question. <laughs> Josh Scott, tell me which he, he would know. All right. Final question. What is your favorite kind of pizza? Favorite kind of pizza? That's a great question. I should have saw this coming, right? Um, yeah. You know, it's funny. As I would, I if you'd asked me twenty years ago, I would have told you uh, there was a place in Atlanta called Fellini's that was on Ponce de Leon Avenue. I used to go in there after band practice and order a Sicilian sliced pizza. It was like an inch and a half mm-hmm. thick. Uh, and it would have a mozzarella, but it would also have. They, I would order feta cheese on it. This was back in my. Uh, Ooh, my uh, mm-hmm. back when I was a health nut, and, uh, and so I would eat one of those and uh, just watch the pounds drift away. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I more recently, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty basic kind of pizza guy now. More recently, I'd probably go towards a thinner crust, and uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I love a classic pepperoni. Uh, cla- nice. and maybe maybe pe- pepperoni and black olive. That's a that's a weird twist. I like I like a pepperoni and black olive. That's yeah, a solid. Choice. You know, it's, there's something there's something about like it, pepperoni and black olive says like, wow, man, this corporate event is pretty sweet. You know what I mean? Like, there's just something about <laughs> that, that combo. You're like, man, free pizza. Whew. You know? Yeah, free pizza, and they even sprung for yeah. black olive. Oh, I'm gonna get Look some more of that. that Caesar salad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, they even went for Domino's. Usually, they only go for Little Caesars. They must have had good profits. <laughs> this year. Right, right. It's a heck of a party. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> right on, man. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming on and uh, filling us in on the story. Uh, I think I think a lot of people will enjoy this. So, thank you very much. I hey, man, it's been a pleasure, and I uh, I really uh, appreciate you asking me to come on and 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 having me share some of this stuff. So, I appreciate it. Absolutely, my man. Uh, well, I, I hope I did all right. I was trying to, um, you know, I sometimes I haven't done many interviews, so I, I, I didn't want to get too. I, I sometimes will get excitable when I tried to try to tam- <laughs> tamper the uh, t- temper. I don't know the uh, my excite my excitability. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. All right, everybody. For Jason, this is Blake, and as always, folks, good luck and good tones. All right, there you have it, people. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this chat. Jason and I really go off into the weeds on Patreon. We're we're diving deep. We're talking we're talking things that we probably have no business talking about. But we're doing it anyway. And if you would like to get in on that chat, slide over to Patreon where for 5 bucks a month, you can get extra episodes beamed right to your ears every week. And thank you so much for everybody that does that. I really really Really, 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 really appreciate it. And as always, if you can't do that, don't sweat it. I get it. I totally understand. But if you could, share this with a friend. Tell somebody about it. If you think this is a fun episode, or if you think any of the episodes that have been published are cool, please tell somebody about it. Share it on social media, or literally just text the episode. Just grab the link, text it to your friend, be like, hey, I really think you would like this program. Thank you to everybody who has done that. Thank you to Jason for coming on. And, you know, just keep being awesome. All right, I'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye. One last thing before we totally sign off here. I just want to remind you that if you do any shopping at Stringjoy, that's Stringjoy Guitar Strings made in Nashville, that will help me out as well. As I've said for years, I'm heavily involved in that company. And I really do think they're making the best products on the market. So if you would like to try custom strings, go to ToneMob.com slash Stringjoy 
and check them out today. I seriously, seriously, seriously love what the team down there is doing. I help them out with all kinds of things. And by you supporting them, you are also supporting me as well. And hey, you need some strings, so why not get some custom strings just for your guitar and playing style? Again, the link for that is tonemob.com slash stringjoy, and that will take you right to their website, and you can do all your shopping through there, and that will help everyone involved out. So thank you very much. Talk to you next time. We are brought to you by the wonderful folks at Gun Street Wiring Shop. Yes, Gun Street Wiring Shop. I've talked about them before. I used to say based out of Bend, Oregon, but guess what? Sean moved to my neck of the woods. Sean's in Portland. Sean is awesome and has helped me with a bunch of stuff lately. And if you have wiring needs for your guitar, he can help you too. If you want to get weird with it, he can get weird. If you just need to spruce things up a little bit, there's your guy. He takes all the guesswork out of doing your guitar wiring, and he makes it simple, and his customer service is top-notch, and I can't say enough good things about Gunstory as a company. I really respect Sean and what he's all about, and the product is top-notch. I've got three different guitars that now have Gun Street harnesses in them, and I could not be happier. So go to GunStreetWiringShop.com and check them out.